to share during this time I just wanted to kind of share uh, what took place uh, in uh, the year 2010 uh, my son had just turned I believe he was 16 and uh, he told me that he goes hey uh, I would like to try out for the American Idol and then when I seen I go well I'm just gonna see where the closest uh, audition for American Idol was and it was in Nashville Tennessee so I talked to him and I go are you ready for it you want to go and he was all jazzed for it. He's like, he's 16. He doesn't care. He's not going to drive. All right? So, you know, because of that, because of this challenge, he and I came out here, and we ended up in the part of uh, Nashville. You remember? <laughs> the, the, the hotel that we stayed in was kind of sketchy and everything like that. And we went downtown for the first time. It was the first time I've ever, ever witnessed uh, Nashville. Uh, kind of fell in love with it the very next day. We got him signed up, he's registered, and then we had to wait one more day for the audition. But in that process of time waiting, uh, I started witnessing, started telling people about Jesus. Now I'm passing out flyers. I know we were here for him, but maybe I think it was he was driven because God gave him this inspiration, maybe for us. Uh, when I fell in love with uh, Nashville, that we ended up going back, and I told my wife about Nashville. I go, we really need to check this city out. I felt drawn. I felt like this is a church that we need to come out and start. And it was uh, five years later, that's where we came out to Nashville and started the, the Cure Church, or we were sent out, basically. So I, let, I wanted to turn it over to my son and just be ministered to. All right, guys? Thank you all. Thank you. Uh, my dad was talking about um, the bad part of town. I thought it was a blessed trip. That was the first time I was blessed with Waffle House, and... Uh, and I fell in love with it, and I'd had it before, but there was something about this trip, and then the hotel was great too. All I was, all I was looking for by that time was a bed after the road trip, and it was great. Um, but um, how many appreciate your pastors? How about a round of applause for your pastors? I honor you guys. I thank you guys for what you do. Um, at, at our church in Kansas City, um, we believe in sending out the best leaders and, and your pastors were great like A-list leaders at the, at the church in Kansas City but felt the call of God to come out here um, so I want to honor you guys tonight and thank you for what you do um, they have grandbabies back in Kansas City but they sacrifice because um, because they love God and they love you guys so um, thank you guys for what you do appreciate you guys um, so I want to talk a little bit just about following God and uh, I want to open up with the story. So I work at this company. It's called Keystone Automotive. And my very, very first boss there is, was a man named Eusebio. Um, I ended up over the years growing to know, uh, know him pretty well. And we had a good relationship. Um, so we would hang out sometimes outside of work. Um, he had me house sit for him one time. And... Uh, we were, we were going somewhere. I can't remember if we were going to eat or going somewhere. I had my wife with me, and uh, he said, hey, we're going to go to this place. I can't remember if we were going to eat or going somewhere else. But he said, we're going to go to this place. Um, I said, okay, shoot me the address or something. And he was like, no, just follow me. So I'm like, okay, I'll just follow you. So I'm following him, and then... Um, as soon as like a light is turning yellow, he speeds up to go past the yellow light, and I'm stuck at a red light now. Don't have the address, don't know where I'm going, and uh, like someone who knows someone is following them, you would think that they would pull over and wait till you get over, or get through a green light or whatever. But no, he just took off, and I didn't know where I was going. And uh, eventually, we got to figure it out. But um, it's it feels like that sometimes when we're following God. We're like, God, you told me to come to this place, or you, you're leading me, but now it feels like I'm stuck, and uh, I don't know where I'm going. So I wanted to uh, read through a portion of scripture where someone kind of felt like this, and it's when God was leading the Israelites out of Egypt. So uh, God was promising them that he was going to take them out of Egypt, take them out of their slavery, and that he was going to bring them into a, a new land, the promised land. So I'm going to pick up from Exodus chapter 14. I'm going to start at verse 10. 
It says, as Pharaoh approached, the people of Israel looked up and panicked when they saw the Egyptians overtaking them. They cried out, cried out to the Lord, and they said to Moses, why did you bring us out here to die in the wilderness? Weren't there enough graves for us in Egypt? What have you done to us? Why did you make us leave Egypt? Didn't you, we tell you that this would happen when we were still in Egypt? We said, leave us alone. Let us be slaves to the Egyptians. It is better to be a slave in Egypt than a corpse in the wilderness. But Moses told the people, don't be afraid. Just stand still and watch the Lord rescue you today. The Egyptians you see today will never be seen again. The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. So sometimes we look at our situation and we think that we're smarter than God sometimes. We're like, God, don't you see this? Don't you see that? Um, you know, we try to protect ourselves from, uh, from bad situations. Um, that could make us uncomfortable. They could put us in a tight spot. Um, but we don't realize that God is wanting us to be put in certain situations sometimes so that he can show off who he is. Um, so we have to have faith in him. We can't have a way out when God is telling us to do something. Um, so the, the, the key is just obedience. Um, I have another story, and it has to do with work again. Um, so I, I work at a warehouse, like I said, and um, I, I was working Saturdays at one point regularly, and uh, my boss told me, he's like, hey, come in at 6 and work on the tr unloading certain uh, trucks and then uh, sort them out and, and whatever. So I knew we were going to be shorthanded one week. He gave me an instruction to come in at 6, uh, and I tried to be smart about it, so I'm like, I'm going to come in at 4 because I'll get a head start since I know I'm going to be shorthanded. So I came in at 4, and the truck wasn't even in the door yet. So I, uh, I thought I could outsmart the situation and um, ended up not working out in my favor. I had to wait till 6 anyway. Um, moral of the story, um, we need to not rush God. So could you imagine when God's leading the, the Israelites to the Red Sea and they see the Egyptians coming like the scripture's talking about? And they're at a dead stop where the Red Sea is. Uh, some of us, you know, we might get worried and start going this way when God wants us to go through it. So if they had, if Moses had gotten worried in his mind and not, and just left and take, did his own way, they would have been overtaken by the Egyptians because that's not the way that God had for them. So even when it looks like we're trapped, we still have to trust the voice of God. What's God telling us to do? And that has to do with so many aspects in our life. That has to do with our, our giving, with our time, if we're, if we're tight on our time, and, or if God tells us to speak to a family member who may be struggling, but, but we don't want to speak because, um, because we're, we don't know how they're going to react. But if God is providing a way for you, he's going to make it happen. You just have to be obedient. So Moses tells the people, don't be afraid, just stand still, watch the Lord rescue you today. That's why I wanted to sing that song that I did because all our lives, God has rescued us. And, um, you know, no matter, you know, what we might have done against him. Um, so I've been, I have, I have two kids at home. And um, my son, he, uh, he's very, very energetic. He's such a funny kid. Uh, but when you have a lot of energy, sometimes you get in trouble. And it doesn't matter how much trouble he gets in. If he needs me, I'm there for him. And th that's what we got to remember about God. Yeah, God, God's place is to judge, but we are his children. So he's, he's going to take care of us. We, we just have to be obedient to him. We have to listen, and he's going he's gonna to be right there for us. Um, so don't take a detour. Don't try to figure out your own way. Stick to the Word of God, the Bible. Stick to praying. When it gets hard, when you go through something and, and you just don't know why and you're stuck, and I believe that some people in here tonight, when you're stuck, rely on God's Word. When, when the enemy's lying to you and, you know, he's, he's telling you what you can't do, what you can't be, just remember what the, the Word of God says about you. So choose to not be a slave to fear. Don't worry, don't let worry 
or don't even let comfort determine how your life is going to be spent. So sometimes comfort is as dang dangerous as, you know, being worried. You know, we can uh, live for the American dream. Look, I'm going to get the, the greatest job and I'm going to get, you know, the, the best house. But God hasn't called you to stay put. God's called you to, he wants you to, to move somewhere else and make an impact. So maybe that's why your house, if, you want, if you're looking to buy a house or something, maybe that's why it's not working out the way that you want it to. Maybe God's trying to move you, wants to move you somewhere else. Or maybe um, you did get that job because it was going to take you out of church and, you, and your family that you're praying to get saved is, is not going to go if they don't see you being faithful. Stuff like that. So don't let comfort determine how you're going to live your life. Let obedience determine how you're going to live your life. Um, John 14, 1 says, Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. So as you're, as you're doing, as you are living your life and, you know, bills are piling up, um, the kids are not listening, um, you know, just whatever, whatever might be happening, your boss is on your case, you know, you, you guys live life, you guys are, know what your problems are, and don't let worry overtake you, like the, the Bible says, don't let your hearts be troubled, just remember to trust in God, because he's the rule of the universe, and um, I always tell people when I minister to them, is that uh, we, what were we created for, and what, what's our purpose, right? Purpose is the big word. So are we created to live a life and work 40 hours a week to, to work a job? No, our, our purpose is not for our job. So why does most of our attention go there? Or our purpose, I wasn't made to lead a family as much as, even though that is my job, I need to lead my family in the ways of the Lord, but that's not my main purpose. My main purpose is to worship God. I was created for him. That's what the Bible teaches. So, in everything that I do, am I bringing glory and honor to God? And um, that's, that's what I'm made for, is to worship. So how can I grow in that? And how can I um, make sure that I'm being led by him and covered by his hand? Um, so, the Israelites... Um, the, Bible, the Bible says that Moses, basically God tells Moses, he's like, why are you crying out to me for? Raise your staff. He's like, basically, I already gave you the answers. He's like, why are you crying out to me? Just do what I already get, told you to do, and that then your way is going to be, you're going to be taken care of. So Moses raises his staff, and we know the story. The Red Sea literally splits in half, and the Israelites are able to walk through to, to freedom. And I believe that's where God is calling us. But we have to remember, don't take the detour. Don't look for ways out. Stay the course and remember to, to give God your all. Um, so, and then even the enemy is going to be swallowed up, like just in this picture. Uh, this, this portion of scripture is very prophetic on Jesus. Moses ends up being like a picture of Jesus. The Israelites is obviously his church. And the enemy is the enemy. So as we listen to Jesus and are obedient, um, you know, we're going to be taken care of. The God's going to take care of the enemy. We don't even have to worry about him. We need to worry about us and being obedient. So um, I just hope that ministers to you tonight. And um, just some one other thing is that when, when we serve, um, when you serve in this house or you serve in your job, just remember to give everything that you have because the Bible says that you work for the Lord. Um, and and he's, he's, he's watching. So when, when you serve, just give everything that you have because he's um, just to honor him. So like we were talking about honoring your pastors, you know, you honor the Lord first above everything else. So... Um, just in everything, honor God and uh, have a good testimony. This is a, you know, this church is, is not going to stay this size forever. So um, people, people are going to start coming. And, um, and those of you that have been here a while, you know, how are you going to minister to them? 
because remember the first time that you came, you wanted somebody to minister to you, have a relationship with you, and just remember that as people start coming, um, how can you encourage them? How can you help them grow? Um, so I believe that each person in here has a calling in this, in this house, and each person, God can do so much more than you can even think about. Um, I pray that you wouldn't limit him in, in what he wants to do. Don't say, I can't do that, or I'm not good at this. I can't. No excuses. Like, don't, don't limit yourself. Just, just be obedient to what God wants to do. And he's going to blow your mind, guys. He's, he's so much bigger. It doesn't matter your background, what, where you came from, who your mom and dad are. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, God can use you in ways that, that you would never imagine. And it's not for our glory. That's the thing. It's for his. So, um, and that's why the doors will open. So I hope, I hope that I encouraged you tonight. And I want to open up. Um, this wasn't a salvation message, but I want to open up. And if anybody in here is like, you know, God, I haven't been living right. I haven't dedicated my life to you or I need to rededicate. Um, if I could encourage you tonight, chase the anointing of God. Don't chase a title. Don't, cho don't chase ministry. Because those things are going to fade, and if, you, if your purpose is in your ministry or in your title, you're going to get burned out. Chase the anointing of God. Chase the covering of God, the presence. So that way, when you are tired, that you can get filled, and that when you are burned out, that he can restore you. Um, because the, the kingdom of God is work. Um, so, like... It would have been great if I had just prayed, Lord, give me a message, and the message appeared on my phone, but I, I still had to put work into it. Your pastor has to do that every Sunday and every uh, Wednesday when you preach, too. So when you live your life, you, you have to put work into it, um, as well as prayer, as well as reading, growing yourself. But um, if that's you tonight, I want to encourage you. Chase his presence. And if, if you want to rededicate your life or for the first time, um, you can raise your hand. We'll see it. Thank you, sir. Thank you, bud. Um, if you guys want prayer, you guys can come up here. I, I would, would love to pray with you and, um, and help you understand. My son's um, praying for for them right here. Uh, there was a couple of things that I've, I've noticed in the scriptures. Like, man, you can take it so much. I was thinking about the children of Israel. It's like, man, they're complaining about Moses. And I'm sure that Moses had a lot of problems. And they're the church. But you know what I appreciate is that Moses had a Caleb. Moses had a Joshua next to him. And you know, the, the way I picture my son, a uh, Christian, as he's ministering right now, he reminds me of a, of a Caleb. And I seen the hand of God just move through his life. Amen. So during this time, I, I, they're, they're just praying right now. Let God minister you. Just worship God right now in your seats. Maybe you're online. Uh, can you just go ahead and sing us a song? This love is so deep, it's more than I can stand. I melt in your peace, it's overwhelming me. Oh, it's overwhelming me. your feet, drink from the cup in your hand, lay back against you and breathe, feel your heart beat, this love is so deep, it's 
It's more than I can stand. I'm melting your peace. It's overwhelming me. Oh, it's overwhelming me. that Red Sea right in front of you. And you might look at your leader and it's like, man, what are you doing? You're leading us in the wrong place. You know, and we can see, you know, when you get that close to your leaders, you're going to see all their flaws. And these people were seeing all the flaws of Moses, you know. So you, what you want to do is be like a Caleb. What you want to do is be like a Joshua. Regardless of the flaws that they seen in Moses, they stood by him and they stayed the course. And I, I remember this one time. You know, uh, all my kids are good kids. All my kids, great kids, right? But I understand I'm the leader of the house, and my kids, I'm leading them. Well, one day, it was on a, it was a, there was a blizzard. There was a blizzard in Kansas City. And my son, Christian, was the, the guy, the go-to guy. Hey, let's go. Without a question, without a doubt, he'd jump in the car with me. Every time, you know, because we just connected that way. When, uh, when our second child was born, me and Christian really just got along he was like my best buddy he was my best friend but even as a leader you make mistakes and I said come on let's go we're gonna go outside I put him in a dangerous situation you know uh, we went out in a blizzard in our car just to check it out because we've never been in the blizzard before and we're driving like a couple of miles away from our home with no jackets <laughs> it's like if we run into trouble so even even at me being a leader, I'm going to have flaws. But the fact that he put his trust in me tells me, man, it's like, man, I better be prayed up. Man. And I believe that this was an This was a time where God really did show up because even though I make mistakes, Moses probably made mistakes, but God had to remind him just like, just like uh, uh, my son said, God spoke to Moses and said, what do you have in your hand? He said, well, now go out with what you're going to get, learn how to speak better take these classes to be a, a great presenter. No, no, just what do you have? Raise it up. So even if you just have an empty hand, just raise it up to the Lord. Say, thank you, Jesus. I'm going to serve you regardless. Even if it's just, I've been disobedient in the past today, I'm going to be obedient. Amen. So follow, it's kind of like that game. Follow your leader. Amen. And if you, if you don't like your leader, the way he's leading you, pray for your leader. Don't talk about him. Pray for him. You know what I mean? And sometimes, you know, you know, there's this, there's this saying. There's this saying that they were going to war, right? Moses was getting tired. And every time Moses was praising God, they were winning the war, right? They were winning the war. But Moses, as a leader, gets tired. And his arms were coming down. And every time his arms were coming down, they started losing the war. So two of his closest friends come up to him and they lift up his hands. Right? And sometimes a leader needs people right beside him to lift up his hands. And you might not like that direction. Come around. <laughs> you know what I mean? like, help your leader. So that's, that's a good story. That was a really good story. And you, uh, I appreciate my son for ministering today, for taking the time to come out and just to be part of our lives. I know he's a busy person. His job uh, demands a lot from him. And his, I'm sure his kids and his family demand a lot from him. <laughs>